Hey, what's up everybody? Listen, uh, Timmy Gibson here with you, a wedding officiant here in Kansas City. And I have been thinking about something and I wanted to do this video. This really isn't a relationship tip, which is what I do a lot uh, here on Facebook. This video is about weddings. I have been in the wedding business for 25 years this year. First wedding was in 1999 down in Houston, Texas in the month of June or July. It was super hot. I just remember that. It was an outdoor wedding. It was crazy. Like people passed out. It was nuts. Um, but when I think about weddings, you know, I meet with couples all the time. And, and we're always talking about weddings and, and sometimes I get to sit with the whole family. Uh, sometimes when the family's really involved in, in it, they'll, they'll show up to some of our planning meetings and different things. And, you know, I'm an officiant, so I don't, I don't do the wedding planning per se, but obviously I've been a part of so many weddings and so many planners are dear friends of mine and I work closely with them. What makes a wedding great? I, this is a video that I hope that you'll that'll go viral, not because I really miss, I mean, obviously, yeah, it'd be cool to go viral, but go viral for one main reason, and that's because I wanted to help people have great weddings. I really do. Great weddings are so much better than bad weddings, <laughs> right? We want to, anybody getting married, they want a good wedding. And then on top of that, they want a good marriage. That's why I do all these relationship tips. That's that's for that part. But I want to talk about just the wedding, right? I want to, I want to talk about the wedding in this video. All my other videos are about the marriage and the relationship. But right now, in this video, let's talk about what makes a wedding great. Here is the key. I mean, it really would be simple. This video could be much shorter, but I'm going to make it much longer because I'm going to just circle all around and talk all about it, this stuff. A wedding should reflect or be reflective of the bride and groom. And if I'm honest, I would say 60-40. 60% or maybe even 70% what the bride wants, 30-40% to 40 what the groom wants. Okay, ideally... Ideally, it would be pretty even, but you know, I was talking to my wife about this here this morning, actually, and I was telling her, I said, you know, when we were planning our wedding, I leaned into you because it's like, hey, listen, I want this to be everything that you want. I'm a little bit, um, and maybe this is a guy thing. But it's like, I just want to marry you. <laughs> so I just want to get married. And I don't care where we do it. I mean, I, I, don't, want to, I don't want Elvis to marry us. I, 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 didn't, I find all that very, no judgment on anyone that had Elvis marry them. Okay. But that's just not something I was going to do. I didn't want anything cheesy and corny and goofy. That's just me. Okay. Thank God my wife didn't either. So... I, I told her this morning, I said, you know, listen, I, I, I do think it's 50, 50, you know, for a couple, 50% groom, 50%, you know, and again, uh, talking about a heterosexual marriage, you know, if it's a groom, groom, bride, bride, whatever, same difference. Um, it's, it's what we, what we want. Okay. But again, I leaned into my wife and said, listen, if you want something, then we're going to do everything we can to make that happen. So a little tip to the grooms, to the dudes out there. I think this is good advice. Make comments below. Let's cuss and discuss this. That should be your attitude. Is what, ask your fiance, your soon to be wife, your bride to be, what do you want? What do you envision? What's your dream? Now, clearly, clearly, you have to start with a budget. Budget these days, wedding budgets, they're all over the place. 
And, and here's the thing. Here's what I've noticed has changed over the 25 years that I've been doing weddings. They have changed in many different ways, and I'll talk about some of those ways here in a minute. But primarily, where I've seen a big change is the bride's family isn't just paying for the whole wedding carte blanche. It's usually a culmination of the bride's family, the groom's family, and the couple themselves. They're all chipping in a little bit, right? This They give something, they give something, and then you pick up the slack. And again, there's all kinds of weddings, right? I've seen it where the groom is the groom's family's paid for it all. I've been where the bride's family pays for it all. I've seen, I've done weddings where the couple pay for it all and their family doesn't do much of anything. And that's okay too. Like that don't mean, that's not a slam at all. I mean, hey, we can, we can only do what we can do, right? And, and we can only contribute as much as we can contribute. So no judgment, no shame, no, don't be feeling bad about any of that. Listen, we all, we all live on a budget. We all have certain uh, excess or not, and we can only do what we can do. So let all that stuff go. You just got to figure out what it is, right? For you, let's say you're a couple, you're getting married, you just got engaged. My advice is talk to your parents, both of you. Talk to your parents, find out what they can do without putting them in the poor house. Okay, write that number down. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that number is, write it down. My family's giving this much, your family's giving this much, write that down. How much are we gonna contribute? Write that down. Take that total, that's your budget. Not more than that, okay? That's your budget. Whatever that number is, that's your budget. Then, as you enter into the planning stages, those decisions that you make have to align with your budget. Okay, and I'm, I'm gonna make numbers up. You know, if, if your budget's $10,000, let's say, well, you probably can't do your wedding at Union Station or the Waldorf Astoria or what, you know, I mean, like whatever the, I'm in Kansas City, the Union, I know how much Union Station is and it would be very, pretty much impossible. Uh, to get married at Union Station unless you just wanted no chairs, no stage, no lighting, no food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but if that's what you want, you know, again, if that's your priority is the venue and you're like willing to say, hey, we're going to get married in a cool venue and not have any food, and not have any flowers and, you know, whatever. I'm being facetious, clearly. But whatever the budget is, stick to the budget. Because it, there's no point in going into debt, in my opinion. This is this is just my opinion, okay? Even though I probably am an expert when it comes to weddings. I've been doing this for 25 years. I've done a lot of weddings over the years, a lot of weddings. And it's not worth going in debt over. It's just not, my opinion. So unless you, so let's just stick with what, what I think is a wise decision. Your families, each of your families have said what they're giving, you know what you can give, that's your budget. So based upon that, you gotta look for a venue, you know, on down the list. Venue photographer, videographer, caterer, efficient, of course, wedding planner, on florist. It goes on and on and on, okay? I can't even think of all the things. You know all the things. If you're in the wedding planning process, you know. And then you just know what you can do and where you can cut corners. I don't care how much either one of the families are giving to have that influence what you do. Is it, am I making sense? How can I say this clearer? Let's put it this way. I was in a session not too long ago and it was the, the couple and and I think it was, it was her parents. Her parents came along for this session. And the parents kind of had some opinions. <laughs> and I said to them, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, whose wedding is this? And they said, well, I mean, it's their wedding. I said, exactly. Like, it's their wedding. I don't care that you're contributing money to their wedding. That doesn't give you any 
say so about anything. <laughs> Can I hear an amen, somebody? Come on. You know I'm right. I mean, we love our parents, okay? But parents, when you give the money to the kids to get married, you're giving that money with zero attachments, zero expectations. You're giving it as a gift because you love them and you're excited about their marriage. You're excited to help them, okay? And so that's how you give it. And when you give it, you let it go. And you don't have an opinion <laughs> unless you're asked. If, you're, if they ask you for your advice, your opinion, your thoughts, well, of course, hello. But no unsolicited advice. And you definitely can't be thrown around. Well, we gave this much money. We expect this. No. Abso-freaking-lutely no. You have no say-so for the kid's wedding. If the, their wedding should reflect their lives, their hopes, their dreams, their expectations, their whatever. Not yours. Okay? Just because you wish you would have or you want to see them do things or you want to see this or what, it does not matter what you think or what you want. It's not your wedding. It's their wedding. Now, again, if the kids are open to talking and open for feedback and open to ideas, well, great, that's fine. But if they're not, shut your mouth, <laughs> zip your lip, keep your opinions to yourself. This is their wedding. So back to my original point, how to have a great wedding. A wedding should reflect the couple. What do you want? I'm talking to the couple now that's getting married. What do you want? Okay, D write it out. I want an outdoor wedding. I want an indoor wedding. I want a buffet. I want a plated. I want 10,000 roses. I want geese to fly over. <laughs> I want the stealth bomber to come flying over us as we're kissing. Again, now you know your budget. We've already that that part should be easy. Here's the budget. You just make sure that everything aligns with the budget. That's that that part to me should be easy. I know it's challenging when the budget might be smaller than you had hoped for. That I I get it. I I understand. I I get it. My wife and I you know, had to really decide what really mattered, what didn't matter, what what was the hill we wanted to die on, so to speak, and what were the things that we kind of wished for, but we didn't have to have, or you know what I mean? And, and we got creative, we did some DIY, and you know, all that stuff, you know? And, and you can do the same. I know that for us, my, my wife had her bouquet made, and then she DIY'd or did it yourself is what that means, just in case there's one person that doesn't know. Like me, I had to look it up a while ago. Anyway, uh, you know, they, they bought all their flowers. Uh, my wife bought all the flowers at Trader Joe's and her and all the, the King's Court. She called it the or Queen's Court, rather. My group was called the King's Court, even though I had a couple queens in there. And her court, hers was the, the King's, uh, Queen's Court. Um, and that's what we called it rather than brides and, and bridesmaids and groomsmen. Anyway, steal that idea. It was great. King's Court and Queen's Court. It was a little fun idea. And, and I could tell you more about that. It was just a, it was a really cute thing that my, my wife came up with. I just thought it was, I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was so special. You know, me, I just text my, my people were like, do you want to be my, in my King's Court? <laughs> she like scripted out this thing and sealed it with a, like rolled up the paper, like a scroll and had a tie it around it. And she did all this special stuff and delivered it to her friends. It was, I was like, you're so cool. I'm not that cool. Um, anyway, so they, a lot of DIY, a lot of do it yourself. So they, they made all of their, their bouquets. They made them themselves from flowers from, I believe it was just Trader Joe's is, is what my wife did. 
Anyway, I know that's a challenge. I know it's a challenge to stay within the budget. And I know it can be hard if you were kind of hoping for a certain thing and, and yet the budget isn't gonna allow that to a certain extent. But I would say this, it does. You know, a budget, a, we all live, hopefully, we somewhat live on a budget. I mean, hey, listen, if I'm honest, I would love to drive a Bentley. If I'm honest, I'm not a flash, at least I don't think I'm flashy. Maybe I'm flashier than I think. I mean, I'm not a big jewelry wearer. I mean, I wear a ring, that's a wedding ring. I'm just not a big jewelry guy, um, but I like cars. And I would like to drive a Bentley. I would, I'd love to have a Bentley or a Rolls Royce, really. Or a Lambo or a McLaren, or I mean, you name it, right? I'm, I'm a guy, I'm, I love cars or an old muscle car. I would love that, have an old GTO that's all tricked out, but it's not in the budget. You know, could I go get the loan and make it happen? Yeah, I would live, I'd be mean, living in my car. I, you know what I mean? I'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm an old used Bentley and I live in it now. <laughs> it's a, right? So it's not in the budget. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even the maintenance. I actually have a friend that has a Bentley. It's sweet. Oh my goodness, it's a sweet ride. I just love it. When he took me for a ride in it, I was just like drooling. I loved it. When he told me what it cost to keep that thing on the road, I was like, dude, one day, one day, man, one day, hopefully I can get there. So I can I can have a Bentley and afford and afford it and afford the maintenance. Anyway, all that aside, it's the same thing here, right? We all try to live on a budget, right? We try to make our mortgage roughly where we need it to be, or rent, or whatever it is for you, right? It's everything in life. We try to stick to a budget. So that part to me is kind of pretty it doesn't need much explaining, you know, here's the budget, here's what we have to spend, make everything fit in there. But you're going to have to make a list of what's the ult, what's the, what is the most important piece for you for your wedding? And, and, and do everything you can to, to make that happen. And there's always, it's like, like, okay, let me just case in point for me, right? Back to my little Bentley thing. I, I want a Bentley, right? I, I can't afford a Bentley. So I drive a Lexus. It's a used Lexus, you know, it's however many old years old now. It's got high miles, but it's a Lexus, right? So that's, you know, it, it, it's like, I have this dream of a Bentley, but how can I have a similar experience, but without the expense, right? And for me, it was like, okay, I could do a used Lexus with high miles, make it work, okay? I think that this is much the same, right? Whatever your budget is, you can still get the dream-ish. Uh, uh, does that make sense? But it might not be exactly the same. So you just, you figure that out. That's for you to know based upon your budget. God bless those people that have, there is no budget, meaning there's just whatever you want, I'll write the check for it. That's awesome. If you have that ability or your family has that ability, that's so freaking cool. You should be so grateful and thankful for that. But even in those situations, still, like I said, the wedding should reflect the kids, not the parents. Okay? Whatever the kids, what, I'm talking to the parents now, whatever the kids want, you're giving their money, you're giving your money to them to have them reach and experience their dreams, their goals, not yours. Don't forget this. It's not about, it's not your wedding. It's their wedding. So write all those things down. Now I'm back to the couple. Write down all the things that you envision. What do you want? Have him write down what he wants, what he expects, what's he's look, what he look, what's he's, what is he looking for? And, and not always, but usually guys just have a few things. You know, I want to be able to smoke a cigar on you know, so I want to know, whatever, whatever there, there's usually some few things that a guy really wants, but I, I feel like a wedding is, is about the bride typically mostly. And so what do you want? I'm not talking to you, the bride. What do you want? What do you, what do you see? What do you envision? What do you dream about? Well, do everything you can to make that happen. You know, 
do everything you can to make that happen. And I know it's diff as different as there are people in the world and marriages happening around the world, that's how different that is. I've done so many weddings where it was just me, the bride and the groom and a couple witnesses and the parents, and that was it. And we met at a park and it was, that was it. Because they wanted to go on a big vacation in Europe. And that was gonna cost, a, you know, a good chunk of money. So rather than spending, you know, 25, 30, 50,000 on a wedding, they spent, you know, a ton on a two week European vacation to dream of. What do you want? Okay. And I'll finish with this thought. I was thinking about this this morning as I was thinking about marriage, the wedding, happiness, and all that stuff. Expectations plays a huge role. If, you, if you're expecting a Rolls Royce Bentley wedding on a Lexus budget, there's gonna be some disappointment there unless you're able to say, hey, I'm, I'm okay not getting married at the Taj Mahal or at, you know, the Union Station or Waldo for Story. Like, I'm okay to get married in a place that we can afford, but I really want a great dress or, you know, or I really want elaborate flowers or I really want great food or, you know what, I wanna keep this simple, this simple and this simple. What I want is a great reception. I want a great live band. I want, you know what I'm saying? Like you just gotta decide what do you want? What do you want? And, and be okay with that. No matter what anyone else says, no matter anyone else's opinion, what do you want and do that? And that will bring you the happiness and the fulfillment and you'll meet your expectations and have the wedding of your dreams. I'm in this business. I've been doing this, like I said, 25 years. And I, I have seen so many people experience unhappiness from or within the wedding in some way and often it was because they've listened and taken opinions of others over their desires. They've taken what the parents want over what they want, or they've taken, you know, even a magazine's opinion about what's cool, what's whatever, over what they want. Listen, traditions don't matter. Uh, Family things don't matter. And what I mean by that is, well, all, you know, my parents are, they want us to get married, whatever, you know, at a church because they got married at a church and that's important to them. Okay, that's great. Well, that's important to them. And that's why they got married at a church because that was important to them. Now, if that's important to you, then for goodness gracious, get married in a church. If that's important to you, for sure do that. But if that's not important to you, you can just tell your parents <laughs> that that's not important to us. We don't care about that. We want to be in one spot, in one location where everything can happen at the same place and they just flip the room or whatever. You know, again, I don't care what the parents want. What do you want? That's what you gotta work on. And then let me just say this, when it comes down to specifics, Again, when people say, well, you've got to do, you've got to do this, you've got to do the first dance, or you, you've got to do the garter toss, or you've got to do uh, the whatever, whatever it is that you, people think that you've got to do. You've got to do the unity candle, or you've got to do the, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. If you don't want to do the garter toss, you don't have to do that. If you don't want to do the bouquet toss, you don't have to do that. You can do whatever you want. It's your wedding. Now, there are certain, you know, traditions in weddings, but even those, I, I, I can't even tell you how much weddings have changed in the 25 years that I've been doing weddings. You know, early on, 25 years ago, most of my weddings were done in churches. Now, I very rarely, even if ever, do I do weddings in churches anymore. 
the garter toss, I, I, that that's not done anymore. Uh, I mean, and if you do it, fine, it's okay. I'm just saying you can do it if you want to, but that's just something that people don't do anymore. And there's so many things that people quit doing. Um, and again, that's up to you. If you want to do the garter toss, do it. If you want to do the bouquet toss, do it. You do you and be happy about it. But don't, don't listen to anyone else if it's not what you want to do. I mean, you can listen to your parents, you can listen to your friends, you can read articles, you can watch videos and get ideas for sure. Absolutely freaking lutely. You can get ideas and get advice, get input uh, for sure. But you know, there's no obligation to take it if you don't want to do it, right? I mean, that. <laughs> whose wedding is it again? Who's getting married? Who's saying I do? You are. All right. Peace, everybody.